and here we go tonight is the second episode of my new project 20 percent off and i'm still flash and this is still real liberty media.com and i like it <laughs> anyway um we get started tonight say hey to people in bots in the chat room if you want to interact with some crazy people, that's pretty much what to do. Get a name and go in there and start with Grimner. He He's pretty fun. Anyway, in the room tonight, we've got the barman running shit. And Cowboy Tech. Hey, Cowboy. Uh, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate. And then in brackets, DC, I guess that's Don. Uh, I don't know. I might be wrong. Asmo. Chloe, Chalcedony, Circle, hey, woman. Uh, Chloe again, me, Graham Z. I thought she was working. Eh, she's probably logged in. Give me a little number up here. Uh, there's Ivy Don C. Woody, hey, Meister Brow. Pundergander, Vinny, Vinny. Poxfod, Poxphone, Rain, RLM, Fluke, Rob Works, hey, Bubbler. Uh, trust number one. Vinny again. Hey, Vinny. Uh, Phantom Beetle. Hey, even Beetle. Well, I thought Beetle just logs on. He's probably not listening. Uh, Cyborg Noodle. Dakota Frumpy. Gromit. Java Doctor. Two J's. Nine J's. Kozu. Ninson. Dubois. Pox at Home. Pone Sauce. Sock Puppet. Skittle. And. What the hell? <laughs> Sometimes people make me giggle with the names they come up with. And tonight, I got a topic. I don't, I don't know where to go with it. I just came up with it at the last minute, and it just slapped me in the face. And this topic, and I would think it's inspired by Moose Girl, because um, long time back, I remember Moose making a point of how few people, you know, are on the internet listening to the stuff that we do. And over the years, I've started to wonder, does it matter if no one listens? And there's two ways to look at everything. So let's try that here tonight on 20% off. Can we get the 20% of an answer? <laughs> how's, how's that? We'll, we'll really Jewify the, the program. But let's see here. Oh, and yeah, and a special thanks to uh, Mr. Grimnir, who handles all the technical parts of the uh what would you call it production puts the programs out there on like bitshoot and spreaker youtube wherever else he's got it he's always playing in the growth department so let's say hey thanks grim for the, all the help with all that because i do enjoy doing this little bit of radio it's it's quite um it's quite entertaining and like Tuesday night, I had Moose Girl and Vinny on the same show, and they were rocking. And Moose Girl brought up a really interesting topic about her property. And it all boils to me down to um, the laws are just manipulated to, to suit certain people. And the people that actually inhabit the homes and such, they're just victims of a legal game. And if it wasn't a game, why would it be different from one place to the next place? So, anyway, I don't know if there's anything that anybody can do to help her, but she knows the the truth behind all the uh, ownership games that they're that they do to us with property in the cities. So, anyway, uh, hopefully we'll get Moose back maybe on a dark table because she picked up a new job. And I wanted to take two seconds to mention that I was paying attention. And there you go, Moose. Ah, Moose has even showed up to the sh room tonight. Yeah, well, I read her name, but sometimes people are logged on and they're off doing other things. So I do it all the time. Um, anyway, so the topic for the night for the show, I might only do an hour or two because um, I, have, I have two other projects I'm doing. So it's this isn't about a lot of time. It was actually about trying to get something that wasn't a complete joke. You know, on record, like Vinny says, you know, make a make a point about a few few topics that I really uh, am interested in. Because most of the the social norm, you know, who killed who and who raped what and this guy's in jail for that, all that 
it bores me now. I don't even care. And if I'm to the level where I've seen enough fake shit happen uh, through government and their little band of gypsies that goes around arresting people. Uh, they make mistakes. And sometimes they just plain out set people up to go to jail. And they've got a newspaper thing to tell everybody just exactly what they want it to be told. <laughs> so it's... Uh, mm. It still has its appeal to the mainstream, but um, I think there's a, a percentage of folks that are catching on to what the police have turned into. You know, not that they weren't something in the beginning, but, you know, this isn't a time to live in the past and hold on to your constitution. It's really, it's really time to wake up and pay attention to the lunatic that's telling you the sky is falling. Because this is the time the sky is, it's really fallen. And it's not going to fall on everybody. It's only going to fall on people that I think are too uninvolved to notice what is really happening around them. You know, the victims of fluorides and vaccines. People that trusted the system to be there for them and then found out, hey, wait a minute. Because when I was involved with the a couple of people that had a kid in that vaccine thing and saw the infant die so quickly, the last people these kids wanted to blame was the hospital and the state. They were convinced the kid was ill, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. They didn't put the vaccinations together with it. And I was an outsider in the family, so my opinions about shit didn't carry a whole lot of weight with anyone. But... The, I do remember that going to visit the kid, it was like trying to get into a bank. Well, no, it was more like trying to get out of a bank after you broke into the bank. The cameras everywhere and doors and you had to be certain this and certain that. And wow. It was very uh, confining. Because it's for the safety of the children. And that's when I start trying to tell people that the reason that people need safety is because the system is a fucking train wreck. And I get, you know, schooled and set straight. And what would we do without government and all that kind of crap? And people, they give me all their opinions. And it led me to this concept of, does it matter if no one listens? Well... I suppose it matters in a sense because if no one listens, you can't change it. And we're all conditioned to think, oh, I'm all by myself in this thing. and no, We can't do nothing about it. And I don't think so. I'm like Hal in the sense of, I know there's something wrong. And I know if, if, if it was um, dealt with in... in a fashion that was going to garnish a certain result, then it would be worth doing. Well, the public seems to be convinced that the legal system is just a complete mess. You know, the rich buy it and sell it like a commodity, and you know, people are on the stock exchange filling prisons so somebody can make a profit selling food to a prison system. <laughs> Now, what irritates me, and this is, so I don't know if these things happened before I left the States, but I was made aware of them after I left the States, and I got on the internet. That was the, the thing that, twi that tilted my um, interest in talking about it in any way, shape, or form was the internet, because I lived in a military town. I didn't carry a gun, didn't want no guns, had long hair, smoked dope. And it wasn't the most popular seat to have in a military town. But like anywhere I've ever been, people accepted me for what I was, tolerated it. But like it, I don't know. It's hard to say what the truth is about, you know, what you can put up with for the good of everybody and what you like is kind of a thin line. You know, it comes back to doesn't matter if no one, no one listens. Because we hear the truth and then we hear the lie. Or we hear the lie and then we hear the truth. Well, which one do you believe? Hmm. I'm going to interrupt this rant for a Grimner intro. He says, flash somebody. 
theme song for tonight's show and for life in general <laughs> living is easy with eyes closed hey john yep misunderstanding all you see it's getting hard to be someone but it all works out it doesn't matter much to me well we've pretty much covered strawberry fields but yeah you know all that shit was all done on purpose to attract a certain kind of mind i think after all these years especially after finding out the scam with mccartney you know whoever this mccartney guy truly is i I make jokes about him and angela merkel being twins or the same person but the guy that really is playing the mccartney role is he's a great musician can't stand him but fucker was good (laughs) see and does it matter if no one listens hmm i guess it it matters because if we didn't listen we couldn't be told what to believe and that's pretty much how i see life now you know is the truth is in it somewhere i guess if you really want to concern yourself with something that nobody else gives a shit for go looking for the truth and when you find it and you're sitting there all alone or maybe with your wife or your dog and your wife or your dog and your cat and, and your wife maybe a cup of tea uh You'll know this shit, and you'll find out, wow, it doesn't matter what what they do. These fucking people in power can do anything they please to us. And then they just tell the newspapers what to say about it, and you've got people eating GMOs and drinking fluoride in the drinking tap water. And it's all okay because, hey, it's good for your teeth. And to this day, after all this shit being exposed through the Internet, where do we sit? Telling people the fluoride's in the water. Well, yeah, it it sure is. It helps your teeth, Johnny. (laughs) So we're in this this loop, in social loop, where you can't ever get out of it because, as many people learn the truth about it, then there's the people that follow it behind them that learn the lie again. (laughs) It's a it's a rat wheel, and we're caught on it. And as long as there's liars, there's going to be stories like the climate change crap. I mean, it got to the United Nations and they made laws and these fucking idiots think it's true and blah, 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 blah. But we all saw Kennedy get shot on television when we were kids that are alive today. And at the time, we were told the opposite of what we saw. And if you dare to argue with that, ooh, boy, you was a communist! you need to be dealt with severely by your Americans because they fight on the side of good and niceness and shit. And and the truth of all this crap, after all these fucking years, bankers wars, go back to any, any, start anywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. Hitler, same thing, bankers war. World War II, World War I, Vietnam, (laughs) <laughs> all the shit that happened in Europe, all the shit that happened before Europe. Because it costs an arm and a damn leg to arm enough people to go somewhere else and uh, successfully invade and conquer another place. And what is the point of that anyway, when you, when you think about it? And here we are in the 21st century. We've got instant everything you can you know watch things on video links and whatnot security beyond anybody's wildest dreams a hundred years ago the public willingly sacrifices its own freedom for the security of videotape for places that do certain kinds of business and uh I don't know. I guess through the TV and the movies and all this media shit, we've all been taught robbing a bank is the worst thing you can possibly do and how violent and everybody gets shot up and all this crap. But you know what they never make any point of ever discussing is after you steal $30 million in $100 bills, what do you do with it? You carry it around? Do you have any idea what that weighs? (laughs) Where do you put it? In your in your apartment? <laughs> you know, you live in a two-bedroom apartment and just stole $30 million. Well, you barely got room in your apartment 
to keep the money you just stole. So how are you going to get rid of it? It's a banker's game. You can't get rid of that. This is what TV's done to the uh, average person. They thought, well, I'll, I find a million dollars. I'll be so great off and until you try to spend it. And then the people that collect money want to know where do you get it from. Hey, where'd that come from? Well, my uh, my dead uncle, <laughs> my dead uncle Irving, I found it in his mattress. <laughs> that one might have worked years ago, like in the John Dillinger days. But we're way too civilized now, you know. Because you know it it doesn't matter if if no one listens or does it. I don't. I think it both does and doesn't, depending on the situation that you're dealing with at the particular time. Uh, think of something to use as an example but oh let's use 9-11 Kennedy 9-11 all that crap um, it's it's got to be insulting to a human being on a personal level that's somehow mentally tied to the state okay because I've never been uh, too awful concerned about being patriotic or Loving the USA or not loving it. It's just another na see, name, bit of dirt, place to rest yourself, uh, wash your dirty feet, whatever the hell it is. It's it's not a, it's not human. <laughs> you can't punch the USA in the nose for fucking up your, you know, your day. There's There's no way you can do anything. So they say no victim, no crime. Hmm. But then again, that's been twisted. Well, there's many, many shows in the future. I could probably try that one on. But um, I could, where would I go with does it matter if no one listens? And I don't mean like anybody not listening to me only. There's lots of people that say the same shit I say. They say it to a small group just like I do. And uh, I don't even know them personally. But we think alike. Our... Maybe our uh, delivery is is uh, different, but I think the the point behind all the stories and the and the information and the, and the other players that come on and have chats with us, Vinny and Miss Mary and Moose, um, ha well shit, even uh, Grimner's even popped in on a show or two. I've had Rob Works, uh, Meister Brow, Solvener, and you know. People have uh, participated in this stuff over the years and had a little fun with me. And some people even go over to on the bit shoot and look it up. I guess it comes up as a rerun. Because you know, being live, the only people that could probably give a shit if it was live or not are the folks on their Real Liberty Media. Oh, and don't forget Miss B Down Under. I don't mention her a lot because we've been separated from the um, old site for a while. Then some changes, but she's always pops into now. She stop, stops over to Grim's new site, Grim and Bo and Ant put together realliberty.org. and uh, it's like World Truth format. It's not, you know, to compare it to something so you know what you're looking at. And if you're looking for a, a you know, the Facebook styled kind of communication site, that would probably be. You know, a smaller version of, but but not so intrusive. And you know, I'm just saying that format so you know your how to navigate the site if you use it. Anyway, I'd recommend it, and I recommend. But then I I recommend Minds and Bitshoot, smaller places. You know, the upstarts and the guys that want to give it a give it a try. You know, see where they're gonna go with it. Who fucking knows what's gonna happen tomorrow? We may lose. Uh, the internet to the enemies. <laughs> Joe Biden might grab the wrong guy's kid, and next thing you know, the internet gets shut down because you know there's evil people in politics. <laughs> or man, here's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, to all you guys out there that that really care if Hillary Clinton is punished. For her crimes, let me let me clue you a some a little about something you're not really thinking through clearly. She already committed the crimes. That woman has never done anything in her whole life, but commit crime. So, 
punishing her? How are you going to punish her? What are you going to do to somebody that's as despicable and nasty as that? It's, it's too late. She need, What she needed was to be stopped, not punished for what she did after it was over. You're living in a fantasy land. And that's why the, these things happen. You know, because we get told a story by government about these wonderful things they're going to fucking do. And they shit all over everybody and split the money up amongst friends and family. And we get nothing. Well, we get the blame, you know, oh, the voters. And you know what? I, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you vote or not. Blame all of us. It doesn't matter if you blame all of us or not. It's got nothing to do with us. It's it's so it's such a group joint illusion. It's so big that it's got a life all of its own. All you have to do is just tell stories about it and mesmerizes people. Oh, you're from California. What's it like there? And how could I ever tell somebody that that's never really traveled i mean maybe they've been around here or europe or something. that's to me that's not really travel. go a couple continents away and, and live there for a year and then go back home <laughs> then do it again well that's traveling but then other people have different versions of travel anyway the point i'm trying to make is what is the point i'm trying to make <laughs> it's all it's all relative to what you believe things are i think you know in my opinion um, so it both does matter if you listen and it both doesn't matter if you listen because we only listen to things we agree with, you know, well, I listen to things I don't agree with, but I, I don't pay them any attention. There's, it's kind of pointless. It's like fuel in the fire. So if you're one of the people that thinks that, uh, Hansel is like an entertainment from my negative side, it, it's not anything that um, I don't carry him in public or any of that. It's an internet game. You know, it keeps my um, my social side of me in check when I see somebody else behave, you know, in a fashion that I would be embarrassed to do that in public. Then I notice it, you know, and I behave accordingly. And it's not it's not necessarily good, but I'd rather do it on the internet than go to the pub downtown, get drunk, and do it there. That would be horrible. And I think that's what society is about, is somehow it makes you restrain the real you. Keep you the real you in that little corner of your head where it belongs. Because the real you, depending on the person, could really get the shit slapped out of them in the wrong situation. you know. But society is designed to operate smoothly, not with a bunch of bumps and shit. Well, maybe that's why they don't pave the roads in America anymore. So that you'll get used to riding on that shitty road. You know, and you've had a shitty day. And you had a shitty ride home from your shitty job. And then your wife all of a sudden looks shitty too. Because everything that happened before it set you up to be in a shitty mood. And I don't know. It's a theory. Could be wrong. Could be wrong about everything I say. But I don't think so, and that's what I mean by does it matter if no one listens? What matters, I think, is what I believe, not what I know. What the hell does that mean? You know, I know something. The earth is round! Prove it. How? Well, here's some books, and here's a telescope, and this guy said that, and this fellow over here says this, and these women over here said that, and you put it all together... And then they, you know, I'm, I was lost 20 minutes before that one. But people, I believe, proof is the answer I like. Has nothing to do with truth or honesty or none of that. But because we all have like these values. Uh, me and Chloe would argue back and forth on the internet if if we keep bringing up our personal opinion about an event that we neither one of us physically were involved in but because of the information that we get separately and the way we each interpret what we see we come up with two different answers now 
that's a result of both of us listening to somebody because we obviously don't just sit in a room with no information and just come to a decision you see that would make you an idiot see what you need to do to come to a decision about something that you didn't physically see is gather some data about what happened from people that saw it now the problem I got to this day with what we saw was MSM now some of the stories that came afterward through the internet that exposed certain things the TV didn't want to mention to us <laughs> like Silverstein and I don't know and what they blatantly did they did a lot of things and said a lot of things right in front of everybody's face and some of the stuff just seems to have gone just unnoticed and I've seen people interviewed by the news I've been interviewed by the news people they can pre uh, present you in any light they choose by editing the amount of tape they've made of your conversation and wording it how they like and they seem to have a way to do that if you watch a watch a news program you can you can think about it long enough and figure out there was more to that conversation than just that that 12 seconds they aired <laughs> You know, so you you have the interviewee looking like a complete and total idiot about whatever the topic of the conversation could have been. And some lights, they make you look good. Sometimes they make you look bad. They're supposed to just report what happens, but they don't. And over the years, I think we've been just, it's been done so much it's common. You know, that's... Like with the gun laws, they're going to breed it right out of the school kids in the city through the state. And in 20 more years, there won't be a kid in the United States that'll touch a handgun or a rifle because they get their ass whipped and no tolerance at the public school for doing what everybody did when they grew up. So they're just going to uh, alter society. And here we go. If no one listens, people both do and don't. But somehow the majority of the of this, they say herd, because we we all act like a bunch of sheep in a lot of ways. But the herd moves, and the momentum of the herd is overwhelming. And it's all mental. It's not about what anybody's physically pushing me around to do. It's the mental expectations of society so that you can function in it. And what they've done is they show you a pretty picture and inside the the inside of this machine has been tampered with and just well fucked with for so many years over and over by so many people and it still operates it's got the illusion of operation so they just keep jacking up the numbers because if you go back in time you'll find out the numbers were a lot smaller and they'll go wow well, there was less people well, there was less people, and there was less this and less that. But now, today, there's exponential profit. You can make profits off your profits. And I'll bet people in, uh, I don't know, banking are just really sad that it's all turned out this way for them. And here we are. We've got all the freaking information about the Federal Reserve Bank, how it works. <laughs> the fractional Reserve Banking the system how they use it and people still do the same damn thing going out borrowing money every day mm. now i don't know they go well there's no other way okay well i understand all that and it's back to because people listen you know there's no rebellion against nothing and the people that started this thing said if the government starts to show growth stop it don't let it do that and here are these amount of um, rights and amendments to all this shit and that shit. And if you do these things, things will work. Okay, well, what happened is over the course of time, the laws were changed behind your back. They were, you're told verbally one thing, but on paper, the paper world where most people don't read, most people that do read don't read the papers. They don't understand the papers if they do read them because they're written in uh, legalese. So, 
what ends up happening is the better uh, hmm, this is kind of a judgment call but the better of the society the people that are um and that have energy to work and accomplish shit and make stuff and be busy and do things they're the majority okay and they're out there and in their own little way some part of them must be aware that they're you know doing their thing to help society operate but what they don't know is the lies that are the truth behind what they've been taught they don't know and then if you try to explain it to them some of them don't even care i've tried some of them don't even have the ability to understand what your problem is why would you want to tell me this <laughs> it doesn't matter you know apathy so there you go now does it matter if no one listens if they're apathetic i guess it doesn't matter but what about if they're not apathetic what about to the outside you know the out what they call it out of the Sweetheart, what's that thing they call people when they they think outside of the box? Critical thinking. Sorry, I was asking my wife, my Danish wife, to back me up in English. <laughs> that's too funny. But see, that's my wife. She would probably know if I would have waited for her to answer. But anyway, what did I come up with there? It's called um, everything's called something, but does it matter if I listen to you? I guess maybe that sometimes it would depend on what what it is you had to say. It's all subjective. There is no one size fits all in this particular matter. But I think that both sides can do equal amounts of harm or good. So what does it all boil down to for me? Hmm. Let's run the uh, business life how we run our personal life. And if we're honest people, then where's all the line come in? You know, who are these people that find it necessary to make business so complicated that you have to have laws and regulations to protect you from the guy you're buying something from? I mean, it's all this modern day uh, jibber jabber because we're dealing with strangers we'll never meet in far away places and all that. Well, when I go down to the grocery store and get my groceries, there's a few people that um physically handicapped and they're they've been working at the grocery store since I got here. Now the evening shift they rotate that shift and give the kids the opportunity to find out what jobs are like. They break them in through working in the grocery store. They last somewhere less like a program, I think, six months to a year is probably the program period and some people don't make it through the first six months but the people that had that have um you know physical like there's a kid down there his name is i think it's ronnie i might be reading it wrong but uh, he's got a bum leg and uh, he's a big strapping kid he drinks beer he likes soccer and all that crap but he he can't walk correctly now that's that's a soft spot for me because uh, I had my my mother went through that where she lost her ability to walk. So I got a soft spot for people that have a you know a walking impairment, and it's hard to not. I don't know if I if I'm aware of it to a level he notices or not, but he's a big tall kid too. He must be like six foot two, so he's got to look down at me when he's standing up and when he's working they give the uh, cashiers here like in England they got a chair to sit in and most of them use it it's like an option you can stand if you want to but why <laughs> what would the point be <laughs> just because you could I guess if you're 16 and you're bored you might stand for a half hour but most of the kids in there they do they do the same thing the same way and the only difference is I notice is uh, the ones that have been told I'm American. I cannot speak to the new kid, and the new kid will just tell me the total in English. And then I know that, oh, the other kid that you replaced said, hey, the American guy with long hair. Because <laughs> uh, that's their way they do it, because I can read the machine, and they don't need to tell me how much the thing is is at the end. But they're they're still um, cordial. You know, they, it's not like Walmart yet. <laughs> 
Let's see what's going on in the RLM chat. Oh, Motley Alaskan came in to see Grim and Rob Works, I see. And Cowboy Tech and such. And they're having a little, I guess, a hello session, so to speak, saying hey and whatnot. Um, I don't know. I've got my mind stuck on uh, Goldilocks and the three voters. Because, you know, the three voters, uh, they wanted to go to town and vote. And it was an all-day thing. Could take 12 hours. But, hey, they're going to go do it. So, while they left their house unattended, Goldilocks came by. <laughs> anyway, you all know that story. I was just playing around. Because uh, I had a mental castration and just completely, I don't know, went uh, went rogue funny. And it didn't work. But, you know, sometimes my indoctrination wins. <laughs> And uh, whatever goes on in my head just comes out of my pie hole. <laughs> so tonight on uh, 20% off, we're going to get 20% of an answer to 20% of a question. <laughs> oh, and for everybody else, I figured out this is the answer to the ultimate question about life, the universe, and everything. And the question seems to me to be, does does it matter if no one listens? <laughs> We all feel like that about shit that we say to people, but the things that we're forced to do through law, you know, on paper in invisible ways that they're so far out of our control, all we can do is complain about them like a bunch of children. There are chemtrail in the skies. What are we going to do? Take pictures and complain on Facebook. That's what I'm going to do. You know why? Because I don't have any freaking idea how to stop something like that. But I I did find a guy in BitChute that claims to have an answer. But I'm not organized. I don't want to go against government and att attract that kind of fight into my daily life. You know? I just have um, outside-of-the-box thinking of, of opinions about things. And they've never been very popular. So I'm, I'm not surprised surprised at all i would be surprised if there was any amount of people that uh were interested in the things that we talk about like on uh, real liberty media for example and not because it's small it's because the bulk of us in you know caught up in the trap in life and that grind and that that windmill thing y you can't slow down long enough to learn about something new i mean where do you find the time if you got if you got a job and a family and responsibilities and all this other stuff, where would you find the time it takes to have your uh, have your brain cleaned of all the crap it was fed for so many years, whatever so many years may have been, and then to try to adapt this ability to tolerate this daily shit that's inflicted on us as as a life form, right? Like, as though we're just another animal, nothing significant about us. No, we've got opposing thumbs. No, we can mar surfaces and make them look incredible, like things that ten times better than what we started with, like sculpting uh, out of a rock or carving out of a piece of wood. You know, I know they've got an elephant that can paint with its, t with its uh, trunk and all that, and it's very clever and it's cute, but, uh, hmm was no Michelangelo or um, not even a Cirque for that because Cirque's very good. She's talented in a lot of ways. You know, uh, Chloe, I've seen Chloe's artwork a couple times. She's done drawings and posted them on uh, realliberty.com. I don't know, what was that? Maybe a year or two back I seen them. Uh, some drawings of some building. Anyway. Uh, but, you know, there's artistic people. Then they're always trying to, Chloe's always trying to get Grimm to come out, get out his guitar and play a lick on the damn radio. And uh, what else do we got going on? Well, because art is a personal, it really is a personal thing. So to to be bold enough to come out into the world with your version of art, because I've done it so many times, it's never anything you get used to because that it's a little piece of me, you know, on that bit of paper or glass or wood or whatever it is. And you, you kind of have a, a connection to it in a mental way. 
but you got to let go of it physically. And here, look at this. And then people, the first thing they do is judge it because they see it. <laughs> and that's what they're supposed to do. And because of the way, you know, we're brought up, we're taught to react to their judgment of our creation as though it fucking matters what they think about it at all. And it, it doesn't. You think it matters because you want approval and you don't want other people to tell you that you're a talentless, um, drug-addled hippie that should live in a, uh, what, uh, under a bridge and work at a gas station. You know, because those are unflattering things to tell somebody else, right? But to put yourself in that position to actually have to hear it when it's your own freaking idea, that's, that's a different kind of person. And, uh, again, with the, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be necessarily a critical thinker, whatever the hell that really means. But I would agree that I don't go with the flow just to be popular or, you know, oh, 50 people will, you know, have your name tattooed on their butt. You know, because I started a cult, what, a week ago or two weeks ago, and nobody wants to join it. I'm all alone. Even my wife won't join my cult. <sighs> Being a cult leader is a lot of work. You got to get followers. How do you do that? Yeah. What? What's the gimmick for that shit? Because you know, if there's a time to not listen, that would be it. You know what? Somehow people listen. I wonder what makes them follow that that's the illusion to me follow where is the world going as far as a leadership thing that you would want to follow it it's it's a failed horrible experiment all the main shit's about is killing each other stealing from each other and fucking the other guy's wife while he enjoys uh you know a nice slow poison and dies it's this you know that's in the entertainment thing i'm i'm leading towards not so much the reality but if you watch enough tv you'd think that any time you go into a major city you're going to be caught up in a gunfight <laughs> and they're always beautiful girls with guns and you know these big tough guys are muscle bound and they don't sweat their hair never moves they can run miles and their their skin is dry and they can speak it's it's tv people now we seem to know that but i think there's people out there that they tend to take their you know their information that they're given from the state and the media and whatnot entertainment they call it that but it's not it's government it's government telling you what to think and the proof is in the pudding because there's a guy named what's his fucking name um Donald Trump, all right, and Donald Trump is sitting in the White House, and he, <laughs> he he's supposed to be the president of the United States of America. Now they they primed this pump for years. They had um, who they have? They had Nixon, and then they had Ford, then they had Jimmy Carter, then they had Reagan. Then they had Clinton, then they had Bush, or they had a Bush between Clintons. Yeah, Bush, Clinton, Bush. Then Obama. You know. Then they were setting everybody up for Hill Dog, and they went, Nah, we're going to give you this washed up game show host that thinks he's rich. And that's what you got. And I don't see Donald Trump in this amazing fucking way these people on minds do. I'll tell you that. Love the Donald much. Why? Because he says the things that he, you know, that they want to hear. That's why we would like somebody. <laughs> if I say the things people want to hear, well, then they're going to like me. Just they're so... <laughs> I understand this completely, too. There are so few people that are free enough in their mind to even care about what i talk about fuck understanding it or agreeing with it that's that's secondary to uh 
to make the, the time to hear the opposition, if it is indeed opposition, is one thing. But to understand the things that we talk about in the Real Liberty Media, hmm. and I'm including everybody, all of you guys, not just dragging, you know, I'm not just sitting up here on a pedestal, look at me, I'm so cool. No, I'm just one of the well, one of the crowd that's got the interest to do the radio and the nut, because it take, took me a while. Oh, boy, I struggled with it. And then I got to the point where I went, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just me doing a little radio program. Get over it. And I did. And I've learned so much stuff on the Internet that I've tried to tell other people about over the years. And when I tell them face-to-face, -face, it's always the same blank, dead, fucking deer, deer um, eyes. There's just something about the uh, the knowledge either uh, the other person either already has it or they don't and telling them if they don't does not does not work what what it does do <laughs> i think is it creates a time lapse where they they try to forget you ever said whatever it is you said and it can cover any topic as long as it's related to state you know if uh the system has control of that topic, medical, police, whatever, something personal. And that person's had an interaction with that medical system or whatever have you. Well, they got their own mind set up and their own past and history and whatnot to deal with to hear this thing about, wait a minute, vaccinations are what? Because, <laughs> you know, they're trusting this thing to not kill them. Or maybe not to not kill them, but to, to ensure that the quality of life is uh, it's at a good standard. you know, That we're not living like dogs and cats and sheep and horses. And then on the other hand, it's very obvious to me that although it has the appearance of freedom, it's nothing more than a glamorized freaking air, free air prison. You know, me, you, everybody, we just walk around within the boundaries you know, of our designated uh, freedom places that are marked by signs and this, that. And it's all a bunch of crap. But, hey, if you disagree with it, you don't have to dis, you know, to uh, disagree with it to the level of physical action. You know, you can disagree mentally and it doesn't change anything going on. You know, you can still go through your day and accept it, but only to a certain point, you know. Uh, hmm. I know it's a really strange topic because I've been in the position of, you know, having to go to work to do these things, to get that done, and not go here because blah, 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 blah. We all know the details. But it's such a personal thing. I wonder uh, what my ability to look at it through your eyes could possibly ever be because I only got my own experience. And I think see my past is fuck I was lucky enough to do that shit you know and then I hear other people talk about stuff on the RLM uh, Real Liberty Media programs and other programs I listen to a lot of stuff and but the tone of the RLM is uh, it's a bit unique and it's a welcoming open group the guy that that uh, actually makes it work for everybody Grimner uh, he doesn't say no to anybody his only thing is he he gets a little uh, down and out when we when we banter and argue about stupid shit. But there's no um, there's no rules. If you want to be an idiot, he lets us be idiots all we like. But there's better things to do, and sometimes we do that too. It's it's there's no you know, there's no rules. So whoever comes in the room and starts shit up, usually that's what happens. And uh, Hmm. I, mean, I don't know it's uh i've been kicked off other sites well not kicked off but yeah i guess it was facebook other sites <laughs> i haven't been f kicked off of twitter but i haven't opened twitter in in so long i can't remember the password i used so i don't want to even go on there and have to go through the gmail to figure out change a password fuck it there's nothing going on in the world it, excuse me. There is nothing going on in the world right now outside of what I can visually see that I truly give a shit about 
that at the level of taking action. You know, although I may care, oh, there's people in Israel that are, you know, fucking the snot out of these Palestinians and stealing their freaking land in front of a whole planet of onlookers doing it, you know, uh, this religious war bullshit, and it's a land grab. But if you say that out loud, you get punished for being (laughs) anti-Semitic. So so they give us, you know, 50 people on the internet so we can all chitter-chatter about it amongst ourselves and keep it out of the mainstream. Because if average Joe ever did grow a conscience and pay attention to the details of, of what governments do, you know, in our names because they own us. <laughs> I, I, I wonder what kind of world we'd live in. But, you know, the truth... After you learn the truth, the, see, the crime's already been committed, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't I don't know where I'm trying to get with that particular thing, but when you pull off a crime as big as assassinating a president, I won't name any one in particular, it was done before, um, it's, it's beyond the, the comprehension of just a normal guy. I mean, think about it for a minute. Let's all be real. I've got no idea what it feels like to go out and assassinate a president. Never tried it. Never thought of trying it. Would never think of trying it. But the way that the society around me is set up is they raise us all with a story about, oh, you could grow up and be the president of the United States, Jose. (laughs) You know? Because they made Barack Obama president. He wasn't even a Barack Obama. That was a that was a clusterfuck of clusterfucks. I mean, as far as deception goes. And all the shit that went on in his administration for all those years. The same... Ooh, excuse me. Dinner. Um, the same exact rubbish that went on under Bush. It just, you know. And what did he do? He blamed Bush for... the. Good six years I listened to that shit until I well let's see I got out in the end of eleven so I listened to the the rhetoric and the bars and all the because I did a lot of um, <laughs> I did a lot of socializing in bars in North Carolina so I got to see the news a lot whether I wanted to or not and there were a lot of people that were. Um, phew, very diehard Republican, um, hard drinking, you know, hard working that were hard working crowd. Oh man! And there I was, me and my hippiness, you know. And somehow or another, I don't know. People just overlook how I see the world, and they care more about what I do to them as people, and how I interact, you know, with their opposition. And they don't agree with me about something. Okay, let's have a let's have a beer. Fuck it, we'll talk about something we agree about. Or we won't talk about nothing. Or I'll just go outside and smoke a joint, and I don't care what you talk about, because I won't be able to speak. <laughs> you know, because when you... The, the sad part about bars is if you drink enough beers, eventually, and you smoke a few joints with it, you're going to get slow and sloppy. And then you got to go home and call it a day. And I'm one of those people that, when I've had enough, I just, that's it. I don't keep drinking until I'm sleeping on the, you know, on the table. That's, that's unattractive. That's the Hannibal Lecter in me. It just, um, it, it's, uh, it's an assault to my sense of taste. <laughs> but I have nothing against the guy that's sleeping on the bar. It's not him. I'm, ta- I'm talking about myself. It's I couldn't do that. But the guy that does it, I'd rather he did that than drive. <laughs> so, it's a catch twenty two, and you, you just. In life, I've just learned to roll with whatever's best for everybody is what you go along with. And the shit that's hurting all of us is, well, hey, make a point of it. Okay, so by some miracle of life, I would say, I was introduced to pot from people outside of my family. My family was not a pot-smoking kind of people. They was a drinking kind of people. And Well, I'll talk about that on Dork Table sometime, but... Pot was a no-no. And it always struck me odd because when I got older, I found out I had uh, an uncle and an aunt that smoked weed. But 
they kept my father didn't want any part of that and they didn't want any part of him so the deal was leave the kid alone and then when i was in my early 20s uh, i rolled back into the la area and i had uh, an aunt she's been dead for quite a few years now but my aunt rosie and uh when my parents were first raising me uh she came to stay get a new start she had a something anyway so she stayed with my parents and as a part of her thing to stay there she helped take care of me and so it's my oldest friend in the world my aunt rosie and here i am 23 years old and i'm coming over to visit her i haven't seen her in a few years and i come in the house and she's lighting a joint and like nothing it so i didn't make a big deal of it she didn't make a big deal of it we smoked it and that was but over the now over the time that i i had left to spend with her we we did that regularly and i'm telling you the people over you know they over uh, explain the results of pot and it, it pot by itself nothing really happens you know you, you reminisce with your aunt about your cousin that moved away and you have some cookies and you maybe watch some cartoons and you go home or or unless you're going to stay there but uh nothing you know nothing exceptional but the the memories of spending that kind of time with her and doing that because it was unacceptable in society all these years right and all the people that I've really was close to all seemed to smoke. My Uncle Joe, when he was alive, same thing. He smoked pot, but nobody wanted no part of my daddy. <laughs> so they, they kept this all secret till after I was in my 20s and seen him again. And that's, um, wow. See, out, as much of a statist I'm not, I was raised by a tyrant statist. This guy was um, up straight and by the book and all that kind of shit in his own, in, in his uh business dealings he was a very honest man and uh <laughs> wow but the, what what he didn't see coming until it was like i was in my teen years was the shift in society where businesses were going down to the shitter things were getting worse <coughs> and then in the like 82 it was that him and my mom decided to pack up and move to england so does it matter if no one listens? I I don't know. I guess it, <laughs> we're back to that. It matters on the topic, because uh, well, picking something here. Let me let me get off on my my folks. But you know, get stoned on the radio and get a little nostalgic and and think about the the old ways and the old things. And I remember my parents saying the exact same things amongst their their. Uh, peer group you know age group and whatnot when i was young i'd hear them saying things like wow things are getting worse they weren't like this before <laughs> and here i am you know fifty nine thousand years old and i tell my wife wow shit's gotten worse <laughs> it does it doesn't get better but where i'm at is uh there's really not a worse to it it's i'm i'm relating how i feel about my home you know my ex-home because now I got a present home, but mentally, because of that indoctrination crap and friends and family, you know, I still got ties, you know, to people that they're so deep rooted in their damn uh, state and religion and football that they'll never speak to me again. But they're still my blood re relations. And how do you, you know, just because you decide you don't want to talk to me anymore? doesn't mean i don't ever want to talk to you again <laughs> i probably wouldn't i'm just saying you know it it's not like a balance thing it's more like a i deal with the rejection like a man and or a grown-up sorry ladies ladies and germs out there that are sexist because we're all men to some level that's why they call you whoa men because <laughs> we go whoa <laughs> right honey <laughs> never mind that's and that in itself is yet another story but you know, if nobody listened to the things that you tell them, would their life be better or worse? Hmm. You know, it's like say, Grim did a program called uh, Grim's Leftovers. This is really fun. I have a lot of fun listening to Grimner um, 
doing the news thing by himself as well as with Moose Girl to chatter and play music with, right? But uh, I like people doing solo projects, and you can hear they're, you know, they're them that's unique by their self. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, he started out with an old story about baking soda cures cancer. And I run into people on Minds.com, uh, where else? RealLibertyMedia.org. Uh, there's a shitload of people I've known for plenty of time here on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat <laughs> that know this as well. And it's not a secret. It's right out there in the open. It, it's just like, what time is it? Baking soda cures cancer. Now, if you say this to the FDA, they'll put you in jail. <laughs> you, you can't you can't legally for whatever I see legally claim there's a cure to cancer because somehow or another these magicians have got us all strapped and it hasn't been proven <laughs> and the the shit that they do to human beings mankind whatever you want to call us life carbon based life forms is they uh, they torture us period and that's the way i see it and if you don't know what i'm talking about you're not listening <laughs> I'm not going to define chemotherapy for a group like you guys you know it and it's hard to keep your interest i suppose if i'm repetitive and keep pounding the same thing but i'm going to do that because uh I've got these ideas that are so unique to everybody but us, you know. And uh, it's good to get a chance to talk about it out loud, I think. Um, like Mary. Mary's done some really uh, good shows where the the topics she was reading about were things I was interested in and things I agreed with. And then she did other shows and she read stuff. And I thought, man, if I, I'd throw the TV against the wall. That was so ridiculous. But society's just gone, you know, full tilt fucking out there. They've got 28 genders. And I think it was Germany that what yesterday I was reading. Germany has now got officially got three genders. Wow. Does anybody but, um, you know, the not status people see the point of splitting this group up from halves to thirds is that not just even greater than having two two groups now you got three groups you can manipulate and they can and you can claim they're free oh you're all free to do whatever you want as long as you don't do anything out it's not written down on this little bit of paper here <laughs> enjoy your freedom now according to the internet there's something going on in france and a few other european countries and it's re it's referred to as the yellow what the yellow jackets or what is that thing yellow vests or something like that but they wear a yellow vest on the weekends and they protest against the government and the only problem i've got with a physical protest against the government is your telling the government by protesting whatever that they decide to do you'll listen to them because they're the government <laughs> so what's the point of your protest you're asking your master to change dressing you know i'm tired of the thousand island on the salad master can i have some other kind for a change and all the other slaves come along and they put their X's on their paper and you go up to the master and you give it to him and then he lights a cigar with it and says no. And all the people go, okay, sir. And then they seem to just try to rewrite the original thing they wanted in a different way to appeal to this entity that's going to someday recognize them and give them their way. <laughs> well, if you've ever raised a child, <clears throat> then you might understand there is a time to give a child his way or her way. And there is a time when the kid doesn't have a fucking idea what it wants. And it's your responsibility to make the decision for the kid. And that's 
some part of life where the state got involved in raising the kids and things have changed in ways that if I was to tell you on the radio some of the snaky shit the state does to spy on you through your children if they're in a public school if you hadn't either seen it with your own two eyes this is the first time you'd have heard it you would think I was making up a story to get ratings on the internet world because I want to be flamboyant and wild but ask your kids sometime if you've got little ones six seven eight years old ask them about the papers that they the questions that they ask about the parents at school and it's not so much that it's an intrusive or invasive because, you know, little kids got parents and sure, they want to talk about their parents. But do your mommy and daddy smoke certain, you know, cigarettes? Do your mommy and daddy drink funny drinks? <laughs> I got reports back from the kids about all kinds of wild crap going on at, at the school. But as parents, we weren't we weren't ever informed of any of this crap. They were just doing it. And what I learned about the power of the school in the 90s could only be a scratch in the glass compared to what it's become. Because we've since then, of course, you had 9-11 happen. And, boy, that scam. <sighs> boy, you talk about, take my freedom, please. The towel heads are going to come and get me. You know, and wow, millions of people after you know a hundred years of just fake fucking full-blown fake wars that were proven shown to you in books and shown to you in the newspapers shown to you television movies you name it and still the modern average judge seems to absorb this crap as entertainment and or is apathetic to taking an action now i don't know what you would consider taking an action but I must have been one of those people because through my whole adult life, the outside world and all its trappings, I dodged it on paper so I never got involved. And until I was, you know, now that I'm living in Denmark with Cirque, now I look back on that and spend some time on the internet with people that are still living in America today. And I can, I can see how my lifestyle, why it irritated everybody so badly because I wouldn't do what they were all doing you know hmm. and some of them are still disappointed today and I can understand that and all that but you know um, hmm. it all it all goes back to you know does it matter if they weren't told the stories they were told to take my experiences to heart the way they did and judge me through their knowledge because they're not going off what I've done to them. They're going off what they're hearing I've done. <laughs> but some pretty bad things have happened to me. Uh, give you a really shitty story about Kirkwall. And here's about if no one listens. This is a great, my mother did not listen to me. Um, I'm living in Kirkwall. Okay. And my present relationship is staying with me. And my father had just passed away. And my mother's fallen apart. Blah, blah, blah. And I needed to get just get away from all the drama. And I'm having all these phone calls with uh, my ex-wife and me have a daughter. And I told my mom, I'm going to the pub to go have a few belts. I'm done. Don't call me. <laughs> well, a couple of drinks into the afternoon... Guess who what happens? My my uh my daughter calls and I dodged the call by putting her on with the the woman I was with. And uh I was drunk and muttered something. Oh they the thing was uh her mother had contracted cancer. And I muttered something shitty about, well, I hope she fucking dies. But I didn't realize that I was loud enough to be heard on the telephone. I thought it was just bitching <laughs> but my daughter heard it so you know does it matter if no one listens that's the case of those yeah it makes a lot of difference because the mom it was statist and whatever um, whatever help i could have been to her wasn't welcome so she was dead within the, a year 
I think it took a year. What what was it? Eleven to no, it took three. She lasted three about three years, give or take, and uh, she's gone. And the daughter didn't feel too good about my uh, attitude towards that because I never enlightened her about the reality of uh, what led up to me and her separating. My kid didn't, you know, never heard my side of it from me. I let it go. And uh, there you go, if no one listens. Because if you don't tell people certain things, then they're not prejudiced. You, you can't drive someone if you you know if you don't try to you have to get you know steer them where you want to go with the tail Vinny Vinny loves this particular topic and instead of making my wife look bad to her daughter I took all the shit and let it go and ignored it and didn't deny or agree I just let it let it be but then at the end she heard me say that you know in a bar drinking and it just pissed her off well then of course more more time goes by what i guess another uh year and a half later i meet uh i meet Cirque. and uh i've been single and my daughter won't talk to me and i meet Cirque. so instead of wallowing in all that misery and being you know upset all the time i just went on my lo- with my life as best i could and try not to judge people for the, you know, the feelings that they make me have. Because that's what, you know, that's how it is. You feel like, oh, look at what you've done. And, well, nah. It, in time, if you deal with it correctly, you learn your lesson and uh, you forgive people for the shit that happens. Because once you do that, then you open up the door for something good to happen back to you instead of revenge. You know? <laughs> revenge is... Uh, Wow, that's justice with a slice of lime, you know? Because uh, injustice, that's just pure revenge. They don't even they don't even play games. But revenge, you know, you got a reason. And uh, if it's personal between one, you know, two people. But, geez, when we start bringing the state into our business and allowing other people to make your decisions for you, uh, I think you lose something. Well, maybe it's not lose. Maybe it's it's taken from me, right? And then for for years, you don't even know you didn't have it because nobody told you. See, back to if no one listens. Because we're t- when I was a kid, we were taught all this crap about you have rights. Here, let me go into rights for a minute. I've thought this through, and I come up with rights are just a bunch of crap. When in my life have I ever needed protection to use a right that I've been granted uh, whatever protection by the government look at them all Uh, I don't own a home so no soldiers are going to come stay with me freedom of speech there's no such thing as freedom of speech somebody can shut this um, site down or take me off the um, thing or block me or whatever there's all kinds of ways so there's no freedom of speech that there's an illusion of it because they tell you so. And then you watch the news and you watch all over the United States the same stories over and over from one side of the country to the other, told the exact same way, almost word for word. And when I saw that with my own two eyes, deep down inside I always knew, nah, the press, ah, they're full of shit. The few things that I've seen with my own two eyes were way different than the things I've seen on the news reporting the stuff that I actually saw. So I've always had a distrust of that. But I don't know. Here we are. It's all subjective. You know, I see it my way and you see it your way. And I give you 20% off your next box of bleach if you see it my way. And we get bribed like that through advertising. Oh, yeah. This... Celebrity uses fluoride toothpaste. Cha! So all you morons out there in toothpaste land you should buy it too. Because it'll make your teeth sparkle. And apparently it does do just exactly that. But it's got a side effect. And apparently the side effect it has takes a long fucking time to work. But what it does, it works on killing your third eye. Yeah, some of that's already done through media and school and 
parenting because you don't want to be a weirdo thinking you've got a third eye. No, no, no. That's for those weird kids. Johnny, you've got two eyes. Look in the mirror. You'll see. And then they cure you of that pursuing that information about because everybody else thinks you're weird if you go looking at that. So they, they have this thing called conformity. So you can fit into the herd and not be a, a thorn in the paw. <laughs> well, some of us, Rob Oryx, Grimner, Jay's Nines, Jay's Chloe, <clears throat> others, Vinny, thorns in the paw still are. And some people are nice about how they thorn in the paw. And some people are like me, versatile. I don't I don't care if you like it or not. I don't care if it's nice or not. I, don't, I only care if it's true or not. You know? And if it's my opinion about something, which is all I've ever claimed to give, then it's true to me. Now, whether it's true to you or not, well, if you don't listen, it don't matter. <laughs> See? And if you do listen, you listen into something you agree with or you're listening to something that amuses you, but you don't seem to listen to things that you disagree with and then feel good about that. I don't. When I hear things I disagree with, I go through the freaking ceiling. Yeah, I want to pound that fucking table and jump around like a gorilla and be tough. <laughs> because there are certain wavelengths of uh, information and knowledge that they just bring me down. <laughs> you know, But not all the time. It, there's nothing about my day that is guaranteed to happen a certain way because it always happens that way. Then there's that one time you count on it and it Whoops, that didn't work. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I do have my limitations. I love my coffees, I, uh, my teas, little little gimmicks like that. Little, uh, what do you, I call them little hooks. Little things that make you feel good. And then like me and my wife have this little coffee and tea game we play. I go make some coffee. You want some tea, honey? <laughs> I'm making tea. <laughs> and, uh, little just little games that you might play with people that are close to you that everybody else they can watch it and they don't even give a shit you're doing it but you do <laughs> and and I think it go here we go does it matter the things that matter to me don't matter to anybody else sometimes and you guys might find this hard to believe but I believe things that Cirque doesn't believe and still we managed to keep a marriage together regardless of what crazy crap that I might tell her I believe or don't believe. And sometimes I'm playing <laughs> just to see what she'll say. And sometimes I really mean it. And it de <laughs> I think it depends on the mood I'm in at the time that I say what I say. So it it's not... Um, there's a fluid thing to, to living with people, you know, and, and having fun. And taking words so seriously and so to heart that they change your your outlook on stuff. And being close to somebody to that level, I'm not I'm not so much uh I wouldn't say fall victim to it, but yeah, fall prey to that kind of uh somebody else's strength dominating my ability to make my up my own mind. You know, like say that um, uh, I like Eric Clapton. I'm a Clapton fan. I always have been since I first heard the guy play back in the 1970. And I went, wow. And still today I hear Clapton and I go, wow. But um, that's as far as it goes. You know, I love the music and it's a, I can appreciate what the guy did, but celebrity and I don't know, just doesn't doesn't seem to control me enough to I'm gonna go out and buy a, a this, that and the other because Eric Clapton stands behind it a hundred percent. And I would want, first thing I'd go Jew and go, Well, I wonder what's in it for him <laughs> But <laughs> I'm suspicious. You know, me and Grim had a disagreement once on a dork table about <laughs> My trusting other people with money. And I would see there. there's that value system that uh, I somehow lack. Money does, I don't know, it doesn't really weigh on the scale. If that's the, the incentive to the 
to the interaction, it's already cheap because it involves money. So I'm not really... There's nothing to not trust or to trust because the best you can do is trust a thief to be a thief and trust an honest man to be an honest man. So you got to decide in your mind in the beginning, am I prepared for both or am I only prepared for one? You know, and if you're only prepared for one and you're wrong, you're going to get slapped in the face. <laughs> now, if you're prepared to, you know, lose your gamble, then, you know, you're prepared for it. You take it differently. Let's see. What are they talking about on the reallibertymedia.com chat? Because I, I really wanted to give this radio thing a, a... Give it a shot. Try to be serious. Talk about a few things that are off the cuff. Um, a little different, you know, because I, I don't know if I've got a quest for control. You know, I think it's more a matter of networking and, and getting getting together with other people i'm not teaching anybody nothing i know that but what i do find is i link up with other people that already agree with the stands that i have on issues that matter and all the crap that we do discuss i mean property taxes to medicine to cops to you know choices and our stands on what we think about freedoms and rights and all that crap but we've got the we've got Grimner here giving us an opportunity to put it on fucking uh, the internet for other people to compare their own perspective to and see what's new going on. You know what what might be different about this weirdo's ideas? Because I listen to some of the craziest shit on the internet, and I find myself in the long run uh, maybe not agreeing, agreeing with the uh, action because of my isolation but agreeing with the principle behind it because that is in fact it it will take a lot of people to make a change and if there's any truth to this revolution story we were fed about the 1700s this could all be a, f a fiction we, you know th there's nobody left alive to say yeah i saw george washington chop down the tree and blah you know all these people have all been dead for a hundred years blah 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 whatever it's been and uh so now you got his stories and tv and internet things to direct you to the direction that that society wants you to think and i look at all the available knowledge there is and equally thrown into it shit tons of manipulation misdirection bald-faced lies so it's like um it's like playing a slot machine. You're going to win if you play long enough, I guess. But have you got enough money to last as long as the bank? Because <laughs> if you open enough links, you're going to find, you know, and I don't mean with a purpose. I mean, if you just opened up what was available, it's going to give you what, either what you're looking for specifically, you're going to find that because it was like they found a way to tap into it. Or you're going to see equal amounts of crap and truth as I do. Uh, maybe it's a frame of mind, you know, it's uh, not not like an ability, but a freedom of, uh, I would say Grimm, Grimner is pretty good comparative for this. Uh, he's uh, capable of looking at something objectively as well as subjectively, because sometimes he throws his opinion in on stuff, and sometimes he doesn't. Every now and again, he'll just report something and other times he'll seem to uh, have a personal opinion and he'll throw that in there and he I like the way he thinks about what he says I do the same thing I stammer and stutter my way through and a lot of the time just trying to find a certain word because you know the thinking process is quick and blah 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 well mine comes up with choices and that's what slows me down trying to figure hmm, okay I got these choices now <laughs> Because my brains, you know, I'm like, uh, quick. They, that's how the name Flash came up in the first place. It's not my real freaking name. But <laughs> I know you know that. But uh, I was on uh, World Truth back when I was learning how to use a computer. And I had found YouTube. And there was every freaking, you know, song by every freaking band you could think of that you'd ever heard. You could find it by typing it in. 
and people would say stuff, and I'd think of a song, and I, and this woman says, you remind me of my ex-husband. We used to call him Flash, and at the time, I was looking to get away from my real state-given name and use some something beside that. So I'd, I'd come up with the somebody as a last name from a TV movie, or maybe not a TV movie, um, Tim Allen movie I saw. He wanted to be Joe somebody, <laughs> be somebody. And I thought that the the concept of be somebody was uh, another Steve, Steve Martin did that one too. But it's such a bizarre, like, to me, like, what the hell does that even mean? But when you look at them grin and they hold up the glass, <laughs> you get the point. And I don't ever want to be somebody because I already am somebody. There's there's nothing to strive for. <laughs> but uh, the individuality, uh, you don't need a name to be an individual. It does help if you use an alias. They're more uh, recognizable. Like Grimnir, I know that name because he's the only one I know named Grimnir. And wow, you make up a name like that, it's kind of... Hey, I well, Vinny because Vinny's uh, Vinny's more of a friend than a, a a face on the screen, so that wasn't right. Let me try another one. Uh, Frumpy. <laughs> I know what Frumpy means, and most people know what Frumpy means, but <laughs> I'm sure that's not your real name. <laughs> but Vinny, yeah, Vincent, yep, that's his real name. So I wonder what that is about some of us that don't give a shit if the next guy ever knows who we are or not. Because it's the only thing that matters about anything I'm doing really is the 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 source of the information. And it's I want to let other people see that. Go to the source of this information and see where it takes you. Because you can't judge that for somebody else. Everybody looks at the straw man and sees it, how they, you know, the words will explain it to a degree and one man will take it seriously and one man will have out, be feel apathetic. I don't give a shit. I ain't going to court for anything. I don't drive a car. They can't stop me for speeding or drunk driving or so, you know, you can eliminate yourself out of that game, but there's no way to actually live in a society and function as uh, an independent, completely self-contained member of that society without being a complete slave to the debt system and fuel, petroleum, electricity, all the crap that's garbage for us. And there's just that small amount of people just bringing up and posting every freaking day on mines. Give them credit for this. Every day is something about pot because so few people really know. Oh, but it's legal. Oh, Monsanto made hemp oil. Fuck you. That's not what I'm talking about at all because the Chinese were using this 2,000 fucking years ago that they recorded probably longer. <laughs> the point is we live in a society collectively, all of us, where the leaders in charge saw it was available to them to lie to the public about the dangers of hemp and cannabis to make it illegal. Therefore, they could sell synthetic crap. Sorry if I bore you with the repetition of that, folks, but I'm still going for their... Well, you know, there could be somebody that never heard me talk before and might not know I think that. And it, it's not a popular thought, as we all know. But lately, it's been written in links. The proof is in the reality that you're surrounded by. Hemp can produce anything that you want to make from it. It's the, it's the do all pro. You know, what would you call it? Property. Now, there's other things in life that hemp won't replace, but it is, it's a good thing that to replace some things with, like petroleum. <laughs> It would make a great additive to our food intake because it's got a lot of it's got a lot of nutritious components to the seed 
that if you do some reading, I don't understand how to explain it to the next man in detail. I only know to explain it that if these things weren't prohibited and we weren't denied them, that that in itself would bring a substantial change in society. Because the violence is, in my opinion, a product of the crap that we're fed, the secondary synthetics, make us this way. If we were living natural, we would probably be completely different. But the powers that be, you know, the leeches that be, like Mary likes to say, the people that own the color blue, they want to own the color blue and red and yellow and black. And they're, they're not going to stop ever. They want all of it. And we've got information on the internet that lets you know that. And then you have the mass media that says, Oh, look, the, the crazy people are talking again. So here we are on the internet. The most in, in the greatest invention, probably, of mankind, if you think about it. But it took everybody convo- involved in to, together to do it. And they were all working separately, you know. The guy that invented the screen, the guys, gals, whatever. But it wasn't like one person did this. This is a, the product of a lot of people. All right, so they've managed to confuse us with, they kill the individual to prop up the corporation, if you will, right? And you look at things like the internet as one thing. It's not one thing. It's a lot of little things grouped together to make a big thing. And when I got a hold of that idea in my head, it made things feel more comfortable for me. And I guess as a hedonist, you know, because I want to enjoy, I would maybe, the way they define certain words or takes you down the road you want to go. But I enjoy life as much as possible. And then there's a faction of people that will encourage you to believe that, well, life can't be enjoyed without an equal amount of disappointment and pain. And, wow, see, more man-made shit to shove down our collective throat to keep this freaking illusion going that's behind everything destroying us. I mean, man, people don't want to talk to each other. Now, I can't say that anymore because when I go out in public, I nod and pass complete strangers and we say, hey, hey in passing. Uh, sometimes we wave at each other, that old military thing. The military guys seem to, to they, they seem to prefer the wave over the t- speech. But, you know, that's my interpretation of interaction. And then there's a few people that like to show off that they speak English in front of their Danish friends. Um... It's you know, it's all a matter of it. does it matter if no one <laughs> listens? If a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there, does it make a sound? Well, if you're a rabbit taking a shit when that thing falls, I think it makes a sound. <laughs> if you're a, a man and you're 500 miles away in an office building or a factory, I don't think you'll hear it. So I think the question's rigged. And that's, you know, I go on on the radio all the time about we're just, we're misled to believe in patterns and and ways that just, when you sit down and you weigh them out, they're really not good for us. Ah, and Frumpy is saying hello to Motley. I guess he just noticed, or maybe one of them just showed back up, because I saw that in the beginning of the chat when I started this crazy show, because 20% off. I'm only 20% off. I don't think I'm like 24% off. 27. <laughs> no, 20. It's about as far as I'll go. I think most people, whatever the average, fuck averages. You see, here we go. All this comparing and I'm as good as you or I'm better than you or, uh, you know, like the, uh, like the illegal thing. Crying out loud, you got a fucking country that was founded with the idea of escape in another country. And now that country has been uh, replaced by a country that you can't go there. You escape from there. (laughs) 
<laughs> or they got this other crap. Now it's live there illegally. Now here's the part that just makes me giggle, right? If they know everybody's that is illegal is illegal, but nothing gets done about it legally. Can you guys not figure out you're being lied to openly about how the law is written and it means one thing in in Latin, you know, legalese, and it means another thing in the press and the uh, through the media and through the, how they tell the public about shit. They word it in a way that it sounds good to you, stupid, but you're getting hammered. And that's the way I interpret it. Boy, my wife the other day, poor thing, she loves to read her newspaper, and the last thing I ever want to hear in the freaking morning about anything is news. You know, this horrible thing happened, that horrible. But she's Danish, and she doesn't see it the way I do. She sees her thing. And the other morning, she had a, there was a train wreck. I think it was yesterday. It was terrible. Some uh, mishap, you know, a uh, thing that should never go wrong that went wrong and the first thing i thought is crap now every day that you take a train to work i gotta sit here and freaking worry oh crap i hope nothing happens on the train and she told me that well that's very american of you <laughs> and she's probably right and i don't think i'm gonna sit here and worry but my first the first reaction was thinking of her going whoa man if that and then I was all bummed, thinking, wait a minute, what if it happened to the people I know here? And How American, because one fucking train wreck. But I come from the land of, if you have one Amtrak wreck that killed a senator, you'll have three more somewhere else. <laughs> I pick off a few more of those pricks while you're at Well, it wasn't senators. I think they were after Congress at the time. They had a, a big dump truck hit an Amtrak train. <laughs> What are the odds of that? You know, the train didn't see the truck or the truck didn't see the train. No, that that's not likely. Hmm. I would say somebody did something bad. That's what I think. Is uh, I believe about nothing that's reported through me about the you know, the accidents and the, the big things that were were told about how they happened. Well, I read about the Titanic once one way and then a couple of years ago i seen some links on the internet and opened my eyes to the titanic in a way i never thought of before tied it to uh, the federal reserve bank it was in the right year the right people died there was a uh, another ship created at the same time it was a sister ship to the titanic there is a photograph i saw on the internet could be real of the Titanic docked in New York City. <laughs> it was brilliant. And all these new ideas, you know, these, uh, hey, you got told this, but this is what really happened, and this is really why that happened. Well, what makes people think it's changed? <laughs> Hillary. They're going to punish Hillary. Hmm. I wonder how much criminal stock Hillary owns. Well, criminal stock's what I call... Uh, owning stock in the criminal they went public with the penitentiaries so now we're we're human chattel to be traded on the stock mark in the stock exchange while you're incarcerated so that some rich fuck can make more money and if they do, i mean they do it on the food and the medical and the buildings and all the technical shit and all the laws that go into all this crap so Living has just become a business. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, that's the way I see it. And no one listens. I guess people listen, but we all feel that the ones that listen disengage in the ways that we individually can disengage. But th stopping this void, you know, this machine this fucking maelstrom it's like a my wife had a great way to explain it she said it, it just eats itself it eats its environment whatever it touches it gobbles it up and you never see it again it's gone it's gone to the void and there's so many of us and there's so much in the world for it to gobble up that it could never it can never end so, 
people are just going to continually do this because we're fueled by the people that are for the void operating. And it, it could probably be stopped if the world took advantage of my three-step plan to unfunk the world. <laughs> But it's a, you know it's a nice dream and it's a wonderful story, but for everybody to tell each other the truth about the things in life that are you know that matter would stop all the secondary bullshit you know oh I don't like you because you're a Democrat oh I don't like you because you're a Republican I don't like you because you're a Jew you're a nigger you're this you're that. Ah. And we're unindated in it every day. I see it all the freaking time. Oh, I'm white. Doesn't anybody love white people anymore? <laughs> Let me tell you something. <sighs> love is not what we've been told love is. It is quite a different thing. I can love people I can't stand to be around. But I can love them, I think. Because all that is is not wanting them to have any bad shit happen to them because I think they're an idiot. But what is thinking somebody has an idiot got to do with wishing them any harm? <laughs> it's, they're not inclusive. But we're seemingly, you know, through the wonders of the electronic world, you know, we're taught how to look at this in that perspective and do this and feel that way and judge and number and catalog and trying to break out of it. Fuck's sake. It doesn't matter. You're going to be on a side in this one no matter what you do. I know that from my experience, but I try to keep it to a, you know, a controlled minimum. You know, it's like uh, letting the idiot in me run rampant for a minute here and there because at least I'm aware I'm doing it. You know, for the, not when I'm doing it, but when I look back on the shitty things I do, they're controlled stupidity. They're they're not like, oh, this evil part of me takes control and I can't stop it like Jekyll and Hyde. Nah, this is a choice I make. I don't, at that moment, don't care what you think. I care what I think. I'm right, blah, blah, blah. And then people play that game back and forth. Now, some people know better than to pay attention. Because... <laughs> Does it matter if no one listens? No, it doesn't matter. Of course not. How could it? But, sadly enough, people listen. <laughs> We're, it's one of those weird topics. I know it's a weird topic. I don't have any idea if I've made any sense trying to banter this one through, but it's been a lot of fun. I've been going on like a yo-yo for quite a while. I enjoy doing the show. I'm going to cut it short a little bit here and... Uh, clean up and uh, tell everybody what's going on and who's doing what and say good night. I had a lot of fun talking about does it matter if no one listens. And if you're one of the people that did listen, I had a lot of fun, so thank you for listening. <laughs> and if you didn't, well, you don't know I said it. It doesn't matter. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, this has been 20% off on Flash and uh we got coming up. What's today? This is Thursday. I did. I decided to do a midnight show from Denmark on a Thursday night. Try to catch the evening crowd out in reallibertymedia.com because I usually do this stuff in my evening, which is your afternoon. And uh, this has been fun. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. I hope I. I hope I don't give it up or get d disillusioned and quit because you know. Oh, I'm not getting enough people listening because the few people that listen. I notice you, and I think that's what's important. Is uh, I feel accomplished because it, you know, it gets somebody. There you go. And tomorrow is Friday, so we got. I think Miss Mary's been uh, ill. I haven't seen a show from her in about a week or so. So I'm uh, gonna ask Grim because I'm still alive and he can type something. <clears throat> if Mary is due back tomorrow, and if not, I'll try to clean it up before I shut this show down. But uh, and then after Miss Mary in her rocket chair, we got Grim and Moose Girl doing the Freakers Ball Friday nights, and then on Saturday I do a thing called the Dork Table for the <laughs> everybody but the cool kids at the dork table. 
And then on Sunday, we got Grimner wakes us up in the morning <laughs> with the blues. And we listen to the blues, if you can, until chat. Or chat <laughs> till trivia. I'm a little tired out here. I'm wearing down. <laughs> anyway, till uh, we play trivia. They got Hal Anthony comes on from behind the woodshed and gives us his perspective on how things go and what we should do to make them better. And uh, Monday, we got Grim doing a private program, giving it a little uh, one-on-one time. I see it inspired me to give it a try. Because it's really kind of fun to do this alone. Just a, I don't know. I like it. And I've been enjoying Grimm's Leftovers. And then Tuesday, I got what I've been trying to do. Me and Vinny started in a perfect world together as a team. And then he found some things that he had to do. And since then, he comes and goes. And if anybody has something they you know, want to get on the damn in a perfect world and yak about, go on to the wire and we'll get you on the radio. And then on uh, Wednesday, normally we have Grammy. So like I said, Grim, I don't know if Mary's ill. No Grammy tomorrow. Okay, is she visiting family or is she down? Because I heard uh, I heard something about her having a cold. And flus and the bad shitty weather can, you know, take a little out of you and keep you off the radio for a bit. Anyway, but then that uh, Tuesday night we got the... Yeah, In a Perfect World, and then Wednesday back to Grammy, and then Thursday back to this crazy 20% off thing I'm trying to do. Anyway, and with that, I will say to all uh, a good night, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody.